<laughs> all right, let's test this thing. All right, how are we? Are we good? Woo! All right, all right. So for years, I suffered from overthinking and anxiety, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about it. But don't worry, I've been informed this is a comedy gig, not group therapy. So to kind of keep the mood light, I've thrown in a couple of knob gags to <laughs> relax people a little bit. Anyway, I'm 43 now. Woo! I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> Married, father, mortgage, office job, home base on Sundays. It's time to get my shit together. Um, so, uh, you know, now I, I kind of spent so long on the kind of far end of the overthinking spectrum that I kind of came out the other side. So it's a little bit like a game of kind of existential Pac Man. <laughs> so I was going to say kind of the far right of the overthinking spectrum, but uh, I realised that kind of phrase might send the wrong message. So, <laughs> but I kind of googled, so I googled to see if anyone had done this existential Pac-Man joke before, um, and I came across this theory on Reddit which states that Pac-Man is just a metaphor for a mental illness, and it's kind of a dark commentary on the pharmaceutical industry, whereby Pac-Man is trapped in an endless cycle of consuming, uh, you know, prescription pills. <laughs> is it? <a> <laughs> <laughs> and in all of this, I felt like there was some irony in there somewhere, but, and I wanted to make a joke about it, but it got complicated and my brain has given up overthinking, so it's like, nah, fuck it, all look donuts. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then kind of having come out the other side, I now occupy a sort of a, a philosophical and spiritual position that I'd say is kind of somewhat akin to kind of nihilism or maybe sort of Zen Buddhism, but it's more commonly known as like zero fucks given. <laughs> um, but there are... Um, there are some things that still trigger my sort of overthink overthinking and anxiety. So recently I was on a 14 hour plane journey um, and the overthinking started like when I got to the gate. So I can see our plane like through the big windows and I can see those two turbofan engines just counting with me, you know, one, two, it doesn't seem like much. But apparently having two engines offers a significant level of safety because if one fails, a commercial airline can still uh, fly for several hours with the other one. And if both engines fail, it can still glide apparently for up to 100 miles. But no matter how many times I tell my brain stuff like this, it, tells, it still tells me to fuck off. And it says that we need at least five engines on each wing <laughs> with a few spare engines stashed in the cargo hold. Be All right. And then we board the plane. And then I'm analysing three things. I can't do three because I'm holding my wine. Um, I'm analysing three things to assess my chances of survival on the flight. Okay, number one, the faces of my fellow passengers. Are these the faces of people that deserve to die? <laughs> <laughs> because if they are, I am fucked. <laughs> number two, the voice of the captain. Okay, the best voices are male, no, I'm joking. <laughs> the best voices, <laughs> I'm joking. The best voices are calm and reassuring and gender neutral, okay? Because uh, <laughs> if, if his voice is not calm and reassuring, again, I'm fucked. Okay? <laughs> if it's not gender neutral, I think I still get to live, but I'm not sure. <laughs> it's kind of, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. I sort of turn into Captain Mannering when I'm doing an airline pilot's voice. <laughs> um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. Welcome um, aboard this 10 flight from London to New York. It's a fine day for flying. Your cabin crew will be on hand, delivering food, beverages, and hand jobs. Uh, <laughs> your comfort. And then number three is the body language of the cabin crew. Okay. Um, so, I mean, they're they're trained to look calm, aren't they? So mine, um, if they're not looking calm, I don't know. Guess what? Well, it's, I mean, it's probably fine, but they probably just run out of tiramisu or something. <laughs> um, mine was still serving the tiramisu during mild turbulence. Meanwhile, I was on my seat, kind of crouched in a half fetal position, <laughs> praying to a god I don't seem to have much use for when I'm safely on the ground. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, kind of speaking of religion, I'd like a set of rosary beads to be given out with the earplugs and the eye masks at the beginning. And I think rosary, <laughs> rosary beads would be kind of a damn sight more useful than those safety videos that they play at the beginning, which I try to ignore. And they always tell you that the oxygen mask will drop down in front of you. Well, I say, fuck the oxygen, you cunt. <laughs> if you're going down, I want chloroform. <laughs> I don't want to feel shit. Right? And when I say, like, I don't want to feel shit, it's like in the Kevin Hart sounds like, 
you know, I don't want to feel shit. Like, you're going to do shit rather than like the Danny Dyer sense of like, nah, bro, you know, I feel like shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so if you're feeling, you're going to feel shit. If you're feeling shit right now because of this overlong aeroplane and it's like, feel comfortable because it's, it's kind of at an end. But it's not the end of me holding the mic and talking about myself, all right? No, no, it's, we're about halfway through and the kind of dread that I can see <laughs> spreading across your faces is kind of akin to the dread that I felt when I realised I had about eight and a half hours of my 14 hour flight left. Um, but yeah, what else can I tell you? So maybe, well, Maybe some more stuff about me? Yeah. 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 Um, so I was a nice guy, right? <laughs> I'm what they call an assigned nice guy at birth, okay, so or hang out. But I identify <laughs> <laughs> I thought it through. I think that works. Huh? <laughs> so, uh, I identify as a sociopath, okay? <laughs> so I'll explain it a little bit. So I was I was raised to care about people and do the right thing. But it always felt wrong somehow. Um, I suffered from kind of emotional dysphoria. So, I mean, basically, I wanted to be a cunt. Um, so, I identify as, as trans, but kind of trans compassion rather than transgender. So, I can still, in theory, be friends with JK Rowling if we ever kind of meet socially. Um, but, I mean, I've been, I've been prescribed a course of empathy blockers. <laughs> um, they're working really well. So now, instead of helping old ladies across the street, I've, take, I've taken to scamming them out of their money instead. <laughs> and now, instead of giving homeless people money, I buy them a coffee, but laced with a mild laxative. <laughs> um, and now, instead of giving children a small handful of sweets at Halloween, I just give them a small punch in the face <laughs> <laughs> But before you judge me, you should know that this is a mental health issue that I'm dealing with. So if you heckle me, it is basically a hate crime. <laughs> um, but uh, as you can see, I kind of live a pretty exciting life. My life is kind of a, every moment is kind of an adrenaline packed thrill ride. I mean, another way to describe this would be chronic stress. Um, married, white collar dad. My life is basically fueled by cortisol. Um, <laughs> And there are so many ways, you know, I try to manage it. There are so many ways people deal with stress and anxiety these days, aren't there? I mean, I read a study the other day that said that counting butterflies can reduce your anxiety by up to 10%. But I find it more effective to count the fentanyl lozenges as I'm popping them into my mouth. <laughs> um, can usually count on a kind of 100% reduction of pain and stress. And by the time I count to 10, I usually black out anyway. So, <laughs> you know, problem solved. Um, and how would you even notice a, a 10% reduction in the stress level anyway? It's kind of only needing to kind of jerk off nine times a day instead of 10. <laughs> to relax, I don't know. Exercise is something I do a lot to manage stress. Another thing I do a lot is donuts. Um, I, carefully, I carefully maintain a layer of belly fat. Um, this is entirely deliberate. So I figure that my thinking is that it will, give me, it will get me through the first few weeks of the apocalypse. When the food runs out. <laughs> All right. Maybe the first few months. <laughs> Until I can fashion a bow and arrow and learn to hunt. Um, but I mean, you know, I don't even like donuts, but it's kind of a level of self sacrifice that I'm willing to make to keep my family alive. <laughs> um, because let's face it, I mean, the only people with shredded abs at the end of the world will be those who've been hacked to pieces with a machete. In a fight over a tin of beans. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, you've been really great. Thank you very much. <laughs>